So, you made an animation. Maybe following my tutorial, maybe using a dedicated animation software, doesn't matter. You have an animation and you want to give it that special sauce to really take it to the next level. Well, we can do that using compositing. And we can do that compositing for free using DaVinci Resolve. So to start here on the timeline, I'm going to drag in my animation. Now I have this as an MOV, so it's a video. If yours is an image sequence, just select all the images and drag that into the timeline. It should bring it in as a video. So I don't need the audio, so I'm gonna make sure I don't have the linked on and just delete the audio. Then I'm going to drag this up and I will bring in my background. Then I will just drag it to make sure it fits. I'll select both of these, right click, make a new fusion clip, and now I will go into fusion. All right, so if I select median two, bring that to the screen by pressing two, I see that's my animation, so I'll just bring that up here. So to keep things organized, I'm gonna hit F2 and rename this to um, animation, and this one is the background. So I wanna add some lighting to them to tie them into the scene better. So after the animation, I'm gonna hit shift space to bring up the select tool menu. Then I'm gonna add a color corrector and then I will do that again. So I have two color correctors. One of these is gonna be for the highlights and the other one's gonna be for the shadows. So I can just rename them accordingly. Then making sure nothing's selected, I'm going to add a transform node and a blur and then I will plug my animation into that. So I'm gonna take the output from the blur, plug that into this blue arrow, which is the mask input of the highlights and the shadows. Then in my highlights, I'm gonna to go to the settings tab and hit apply mask inverted. So now this color corrector is gonna affect everything that's outside of this shape, and this color corrector will affect everything that's in the shape. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So in the shadows, I'm gonna bring down the gain a little bit, and that made everything darker. But in the transform, if I move it subtly, you see that adds what looks like a rim lighting to them. Now you can't move it too much or it starts to break the effect, but if you keep it really subtle, it looks pretty nice. Now in the highlights, I can give it some color. May bring it to a nice blue color to match the scene. If I want to, I could bring up the gain to make it brighter. I don't think it needs it for this scene. And I might also give the shadows some bluish tones. Now, depending on the look you're going for, you can also add some blur to it just to make the lighting a little bit softer. Almost gives it more of a Space Jam type shading if that's what you're going for. For this scene, I think I will bring down the blur all the way. I like those sharp highlights. And the nice thing about this is that it updates every frame, so it moves with them, so you don't have to draw the highlights on each frame. So now we have some lighting on them, but let's add some shadows. So again, making sure nothing's selected, I'm going to add a DVE node and plug the animation into that. So if I bring that to the screen, so the DVE node is basically a fake 3D. It lets you rotate your image on the X, Y, and Z axis, kind of like it's on a 3D card. Now right now it's rotating from the middle, which we don't want. So I'm gonna take this pivot control, which controlled this little green X right here, and I'm gonna bring it down to where their feet touch the floor. Now I'm gonna bring up the X rotation until it looks like they're lying flat on the ground. Then after the background, I can add a color corrector, plug our DVE into the mask input of that, and I can bring down the gain some. And now we have a shadow on the ground that moves with them. Now that's the bulk of this technique, but there are still a few things we can do to really take this to the next level. This may not work for every scene, but for this, I think I might add some glow. So I'm gonna add a soft glow. Now, obviously this is too much. So I'm gonna bring up the threshold until it's just on the highlights. I think I'll bring up the glow size and bring down the gain a little bit. It's subtle, but I think it looks pretty cool. I think I might also add some vignetting. I'm going to add a brightness contrast, bring down an ellipse into that. I'm gonna bring down the gain. Then in the ellipse, I'm gonna invert it and soft edge it a ton. Then I'll just change the shape of that so that it fits. Now these steps definitely aren't as dramatic or drastic as the lighting or shadow, but honestly adding a bunch of small touches to your composite is really what's gonna make it stand out above the rest. You can see before and after. I think it adds a lot of depth to the scene. And the nice thing about this setup is that it's really easy to make changes to. So if I wanted to bring in a different background, plug that in. Well, right off the bat, I can see I don't want this soft glow. I think maybe I'm gonna bring out the vignette a little bit more. Definitely don't want the shadows to be as intense. 
think I'll bring the colors to something a little bit warmer. I think I'm gonna make the lighting a little bit more overhead and I will bring up the blur a little bit for this one. And now really easily, we have a lighting setup for an entirely different scene. And that's how you can level up your animations using compositing in DaVinci Resolve. I don't know how many of you are still watching at this point, but I did wanna say thank you. When I'm recording this, I'm almost at 10,000 subscribers, which is actually crazy. These animation videos have been doing way better than I expected, and this is the last one I have planned, but if you have any suggestions for new videos, please leave them in the comments. And if you want to learn how to make your own animations inside of DaVinci Resolve, you can check out this video right here.